Hey, what's up guys, Zol here, and as many of you start your first semester of college and you're going into your first chemistry class, general chemistry, I wanted to make this little guide on my tips on how to succeed in general chemistry as someone who's recently graduated as a chemistry major and aced general chemistry when I took it my freshman year. I kind of came to a few conclusions on how to do well on the class, what to focus on, and like some tips to succeed in general because I know freshman year can be a really trying time and chemistry isn't the easiest of classes so I just wanted to give my little guide. And many of you, if you've taken general chemistry already, I actually have a video just like this for organic chemistry which a lot of people take their sophomore years or even second semester freshman year depending on what school you go to. To. But with these little guides, I just want to kind of give a lay of the land of the class and my general tips on how to succeed and what to focus on in the class. With that, let's hop right into it. Now, the first thing to note when going into general chemistry is people come from all sorts of educational backgrounds and different levels when they're going into college and doing the chemistry major. And even if you didn't do well in high school chemistry, it has almost no bearing on if you're going to do well in college chemistry. College chemistry is going to reteach you all the chemistry you need to know. And so you shouldn't be really worried on if you don't have a huge chemistry knowledge going into your first general chemistry class. That being said, they're going to have a lot less focus on the math and that's more expected that you know how to do a lot of this math that's going to be required for this class. So my first recommendation is if you are maybe less confident in your algebra skills, maybe brush up on those. Luckily for general chemistry, you're only gonna be using algebra as like the max. You're not gonna be going into calculus and all. Those are in much later chemistry classes. So just brush up on a lot of your basic algebra. You are going to be doing a lot of algebra. Almost all the math problems in these gen chem classes are just basic algebra problems. And so if you're confident in your algebra skills, you can focus more on the chemistry theory and how to apply that math to solve these problems. So that's my first recommendation. Just make sure you're comfortable with that basic math before going into general chemistry because a lot of the time they're not going to have time to go over the math itself in class and they're going to be focusing on the chem stuff. Now the next thing to keep in mind is significant figures and significant figures are kind of a nightmare and no one actually learns how to use them properly and they seem useless at first. That being said, significant figures are going to come back to haunt you in all your chemistry classes that involve like lab work or any analysis. So be sure to try and learn significant figures and actually Let's do a quick demonstration on significant figures. So on paper, sig figs don't actually make a lot of sense, but they're super useful in the lab because they're basically measuring the uncertainty in your measuring equipment. Not all measuring equipment is built the same, and a graduated cylinder is going to be able to measure more accurately than something like a beaker. And so for this, we've created the system to measure that called significant figures. And if you see here, on this little beaker, we can do a quick demonstration on why significant figures are important. Now, if you're looking closely at this beaker, you can see that the line of our liquid is about halfway between the 30 and the 40 line, but you don't actually have any measurements in between there. So all you can know is that this liquid is somewhere in the 30 range. And then our uncertain measurement is going to be somewhere between 30 and 40. So you take your first number, which is my three, because this is somewhere in the 30s. And then after that, we can make a guess that this is 35 millimeters, milliliters, sorry. And that 35 milliliters is kind of uncertain. We don't know the exact number if it's uh, 35, 34, or 36. So we can write here that this is 35 plus or minus one. And so that actually is two significant figures. You have three and five. And so that is a complete demonstration, but I hope it sort of gives you an insight on why you need significant figures because not all glassware is meant the same. And as you can see with that uh, beaker, it's not super accurate. There's only two significant figures. And the more significant figures you can have with your measurement device kind of, it 
demonstrates that it's a more accurate way to measure something. And that's why it's important, because sometimes when you're just in class, it seems useless and you're wondering why you're putting these arbitrary numbers in or not in your answer. And I will say, of all these seemingly useless things you learn in Gen Chem, like your polyatomic ions, etc., significant figures are actually super important, so keep those in the back of your head for future chemistry classes. And now, out of our little lab excursion there, don't be afraid to ask questions. General chemistry and just chemistry classes in general can be confusing, and a lot of issues people come to is they'll ask questions when they need, but sometimes you're so kind of like behind or confused about a subject, you don't even know what to ask questions about, and it'll cause students to stop asking questions at all and they get even more behind. Don't be afraid to stop the professor and just say, I don't understand, can you explain this in a completely different way? I'm sure there are other people in these massive Gen Chem classes that are feeling the same and the professor will be happy to explain. Sometimes you're in classes with a lot of material or a really big class and they won't be able to stop the whole class then and there, but they'll tell you to meet them after class or come to office hours and be sure to take them up on that. It can be super helpful to go have something explained in a different way in office hours or just a subject clarified. And a lot of the times people who don't fully understand something will try and do their assignments or homework or studying while still not fully understanding it and it makes that way less efficient and they'll just be kind of hitting a brick wall every time they're trying to study or solve a problem. So be sure to just go to your professors. They're there to teach you, so learn from them. My next tip is form a study group. And I know it's going to be a lot of weird, uh, like, awkwardness and strangers in your first general chemistry class. You don't know who's in your major, etc. But don't be afraid to, at the end of class, just tell everyone, hey, do you guys want to start, like, a group me, group chat? We can all talk about homework problems, study together, form like study groups, etc. I've done that in quite a few of my chemistry classes and it's super helpful because both having other students help explain topics you don't understand can help you learn them, but I also found that if I teach other topics to students when I do understand them, it furthers my understanding of a topic and it's kind of like a marker that you really know a subject if you can teach it to someone else. So be sure to form study groups. They make studying way more effective and also fun and they kind of like keep you to it. It's almost like going to the gym when you have a buddy who's exercising with you. It's harder to, or it's easier to stay on schedule and the same goes for studying. So make a study group. Next step is don't get behind in your chemistry classes because in a lot of chemistry classes, everything adds on each other. And if you get behind sometime early in the semester, stuff later in the semester is gonna add on it and it's all cumulative. And if you don't know that first stuff, it's gonna be an even worse situation when you're trying to catch up on like a whole semester's worth of material just to understand something that happened later on. That's not just a general chemistry tip, but that's an almost every single chemistry class so always try and stay ahead even if it's difficult and you need to sacrifice some other things because the cumulative nature of chemistry makes it very difficult in the long run. And one of my last couple of tips is specifically in general chemistry you will be learning about orbitals and that sort of quantum stuff and it's way weirder and less practical at first than a lot of the other stuff like unit conversions you seem to be learning. That being said, orbitals will come back in almost every single chemistry class you take. They're fundamentally how all these atoms work and bond, etc. And I really recommend knowing those orbitals well. If that's the one thing you get out of general chemistry, orbitals are going to be important throughout your whole chemistry degree, so be sure to learn how they work. It's going to be a lifesaver when you get to inorganic, when you get to p-chem, even inorganic chem, you're going to need to know how these orbitals work. And lastly, don't stress too much. Freshman year can be really difficult. This is your first chemistry class you're taking in college for a lot of people, and it's okay if you don't do absolutely amazing in it. Lots of people do worse in their first freshman semester, and then they'll get into the groove of things and do a lot better in later on uh, in their classes. So don't be too stressed if general chemistry is really tough. You're also dealing with a lot of other stuff in college. And so 
With that, I hope this video is helpful for any of you guys going into general chemistry and kind of entering your chemistry degree. And remember, chemistry can be really difficult, but it's super rewarding. And if you are having your own tips or anything down below, be sure to comment, and I will see you guys next time.